Hi everyone, welcome to the first episode in desktop mining. If you saw one of our first videos where we talked about wanting to just do cryptocurrency mining and wanted to see if it was profitable currently, um, we came up with three parameters that we wanted to research. One was desktop mining with some regular equipment. Another was cloud mining. And then we were going to also desktop mine with a little bit higher end equipment, more of like a rig, as people would call them, uh, which is catered to cryptocurrency mining. Before I get started on talking about this first company and using it for desktop mining, I just wanted to go over one thing that I noticed in a couple of blog posts and uh, discussions that people were having was they were asking if some of these companies were profitable. And the thing that kind of stands out to me is that they don't understand what makes something profitable or not. They just think because I'm using, in this case, let's say nice hash, which we're going to be using today versus another one of the popular uh, companies, Minergate is one profitable over the other. And I think that's an unfair statement because it's not so much about what tool you use to mine versus what you're mining and how that is profitable or not. So I'm not going to go into too many details about nice hash. I'm not trying to evaluate, you know, one application or company over the other as much as just, you know, testing it out, seeing how it works, getting a general idea and also trying to find out if we can make a profit because again that's been the whole goal of everything that we're doing is can we make money mining cryptocurrency so here you can see the nice ass application you can just log on to their website you can create an account or not create an account that's your choice um, I think maybe creating an account gives you a little bit more information and keeps it a little simpler um, but if you just download the application you can just drop your Bitcoin address right here and it will deliver Bitcoin every so often. Um, now here, you know, you can see we picked the service location in the United States because that's where we are. And we've got the Bitcoin address. This is actually a Bitcoin address that NiceHash created for us. Um, and then after that, we've got a worker name. So you could, you know, maybe differentiate one computer from another because maybe you're trying to mine on three computers and so you want to keep track of one over the other. Uh, once you get the application uh, you run this benchmark tool and it goes and figures out what you actually have on your computer if it's a processor if it's got the right you know specifications and performance capabilities then it says okay I could use this processor to do a certain algorithm of mining and uh, if you've got a graphics card, well, here's the capability of this graphics card, and I know what I can mine based on those capabilities. So once you've done your benchmark and you've got the application ready to run, um, you just click start. So as you can see, it's starting to <clears throat> show the two devices that we have according to it. If you had you know, more devices, like let's say three video cards, you'd see them listed here. In this case, this you know basic desktop computer has a CPU that it thinks it can use to mine, and it has one GPU. Uh, this GPU is, uh, as you can see here, an AMD Radeon 7800. It's not a very powerful GPU. It might be nice and have four ports on it so that we can use multiple monitors, but it really doesn't have high-end graphics capabilities. And then the CPU is actually a pretty high-end CPU. If you were building a mining rig, you wouldn't have a CPU this high. Uh, but now when it comes to cryptocurrency, the CPU really is not the, uh, the winner in this type of a uh, application. So let's see if we can find some traffic here. Um, looking at the numbers below here in this particular account, you can see we mined a little bit, a whopping three cents. Um, and we've got probably three different numbers that we used on NiceHash. Uh, luckily here we can see that the mining speed is 93 hash on kryptonite which I believe is Monero and so we're going to take this number and we're going to uh, do a little bit of research on how much money can we make 
if we were mining this, you know, 24 seven and what the cost is of mining it 24 seven. So we're going to just click stop and go ahead and open up our web browser and find the tool. And here we go. So we're going to go to coin wars this time and we're going to click on mining calculators, scroll down for Monero and here's Monero. And we're going to take that hash rate of 94 and type it in here. And we're going to initially just start off with zero power. Everything's going to be zero. There's going to be no pool fees. And we're just going to calculate what the approximate income could be. And based on today's, you know, technical details, this comes up with a monthly of 473. So if you had this device running 24 seven, at the end of the month, you'd have just under $5. Now, again, we didn't have any costs associated. So whether uh, NiceHash or anybody else is charging you a fee in the sense of if you're using an application like NiceHash, but yet maybe mining with somebody else, which happens in their um, command line version, um, then that company might have a pool fee. And that's why you're seeing, you know, some of these calculators considering a pool fee, not all of them, which would be nice, um, but some of them do have it. And of course they all have the power fee. So now that we know what we think we could make, let's put some reality behind it. And let's figure out what is it costing us to actually run the computer. Earlier I put a kilowatt on the computer so that way we could measure the electricity we're using while mining. I just start that video. And basically, you know, watching it over a window of time, we probably averaged around 100 watts while the computer was doing random things. Um, and this is an efficient power supply. So 100 watts is pretty good considering it's, a, I believe, a 550 watt power supply. Now, um, these numbers go up and down, but once we start hashing or mining, the numbers start to go up. Now, the numbers do fluctuate because we're not getting as many requests to process the block um, for this particular coin and with the hash power that we have, which wasn't so great. Usually if the hash power is a little higher and um, you're hitting back to back to back uh, processing of these requests and therefore your CPU it stays higher and so does your power consumption. So based on what we looked at, I think we're gonna go with a 140 as a number to consider as an average. Let's put the 140 number that we found. I believe we're paying 12 cents. And there's no pool fees or other costs associated with this. We're doing purely the hashing power that we have, what we can earn with that hashing power that we saw before, and then what happens if we had just 140 watts running 24 seven at 12 cents a kilowatt. Press on calculate and scroll that down. And now we can see the number on the right is nice and red, basically negative. So we had that number originally, we see 467 that we could make, but once we take that 1210 for the month of electricity cost, we'd be losing $7.43. So as you can see, mining Monero on a desktop doesn't make sense. Now it might make sense in a mining rig that's got better equipment, but right now we're just evaluating a plain old desktop. So right now the, the value doesn't look too great. Let's minimize this and let's minimize this. And just to you know share with you, I'm gonna to go to the NiceHash site and I'm gonna take a look at some numbers here. So this is another one of the uh, wallets that we have and we've hashed a little bit more. I actually had probably two or three different computers running at a time trying to get this number up there. And as you can see, $2.23 is not a whole lot to talk about. Now, I can go to the Find Miner and look for the other accounts I have. Um, so we're just gonna go ahead and jump up to this tab. Here's another account that you can see we mined uh, 43 cents worth. And again, this is a multiple day uh, project. This was not just, you know, oh, run an hour here and there or run 10 hours total. There's a lot of hours behind these small numbers. 
And the third account, which uh, looks like it wants to refresh, we'll actually use the Find Miner button here, click on the third account, and this one had a uh, whopping three cents. So three cents here, uh, 43 gives us 46. So you're looking basically at about $2.60. And I know that uh, we used a lot more in electricity to do this test, not only uh, under NiceHash, but even under MinerGate, which we'll review on the next episode. So having said that, we've uh, learned a little bit more about desktop mining today and its profitability or lack of profitability. And that's kind of the goal. The goal was to figure out on a regular desktop, could we make some money? So my immediate feeling is that if you have average hardware um, and you try to mine, you're really not gonna make money. And in the rare case that maybe you get your electricity paid for, then you have an opportunity to make a few dollars, but you're really beating up your computer for that few dollars. And that's where you know it's debatable as to whether it's worth it. So hopefully you liked the video. If you did, please give us a thumbs up. If you didn't, it's okay, give us a thumbs down. You know, tell us why down below. If you've done some mining on your own with desktop and you wanna share your story, share some information, please add that in the comments below. And if you like what we're doing and wanna see more, then click subscribe uh, as well. I appreciate you listening to the end and I look forward to hearing your stories. Good luck mining out there and we'll see you next time, bye.